Pond Canoe Company is dedicated to uh, sharing the great beauty of the uh, Mississippi River, uh, and in specific the lower Mississippi River, which is the last thousand miles of the biggest river in North America. Far Park Canoe Company is a canoe company that which helps underprivileged kids in Clarksdale find their find their way. Basically, we bring them in and teach them canoe ethics, in which in, in turn teaches them character, discipline, work ethic, and it gives them the confidence to, to follow their path in life. Everything we do in this company from A to Z, it all somehow falls underneath that uh, mission of sharing the uh, beauty and the wildness and um, substance uh, that comes out of uh, experience, human experience in uh, human powered vessels such as canoes, kayaks, stand up paddle boards um, on the Mississippi River. Nowhere to run. Men with their tractors growling, their shovels just begun. This point at the top that uh, the water's moving really fast. The river guys are basically, like I say, we're just a vessel. We're, we're just we're putting you in a situation to be introduced to one of the greatest natural muse or just phenomenal in the world. I mean, and it just has a way with people. It has a way of bringing out their natural instincts and. They, they become refocused. They figure out what's important. Good boy. This is Quapaw Canoe Company. We started here in 1998, and I lived in this location we call the cave since 1991. And this is uh, one of our maps. We love maps. Uh, this is a depiction, a watercolor depiction of the Lower Mississippi River, which starts here where the Ohio River comes from uh, Pittsburgh and runs down uh, almost a thousand miles down to the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the head of passes, the Southwest Pass, South Pass, and the Pass of La Ute. Here's New Orleans, Pontchartrain, uh, Baton Rouge, Vicksburg, Memphis, Little Rock, and here we are in this uh, fertile golden strip of land known as the Mississippi Delta. And this is a land where the Mississippi Delta Blues come from. What brought me to the Mississippi River was uh, something like that map on the wall. Um, and uh, when I was a kid growing up, I, I was, I've always been a map lover. I'd spend many hours just studying maps of America and maps of the world. And um, the blue line just of the Mississippi River and the shape of it, you know, blue, 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 curling away through the middle of the country, just always attracted my attention. So it was really uh, uh, just the uh, curiosity about what that what that meandering blue line was. <laughs> and then in high school, um, my best friend and I um, uh, honors English class, and we studied uh, Huck Finn, you know, the adventures of uh, Huckleberry Finn. We decided that we weren't going to college, we were going to go to the Mississippi River and build a raft and that was going to be our continuing education, you know, our higher education. <laughs> well actually when I first came to Mississippi it was on the Mississippi River and um, uh, I was on a raft trip and um, I ended up a, a, a just thrown ashore on a, on a desolate island on the northern part of the, of the uh, Mississippi Delta. And um, so really I was born out of the, I mean I almost died and I was born really on this experience uh, uh, on the river. The Mississippi River brought me to Mississippi, to the state of Mississippi. But actually to Clarksville, um, I came here later in 1991. Um, with a guitar and a backpack looking for someone to teach me um, to play the blues. I was led to a guy named uh, Johnny Billington, Mr. Johnny Billington. He's, he's since passed away, but um, he um, was a master blues musician who um, 
who made it his life's commitment to share the blues, to teach kids, mostly, mostly young uh, black kids from the neighborhoods how to play the blues. But every once in a while, someone would come along like me, and uh, and he would take a, you know anyone in and uh, and uh, spend some time with them if anyone had any interest. So when I showed up with my guitar in my hands and uh, asked if he would teach me to play some blues, he said yes, but you got to put that guitar away and, and here, come over here and sit down here. Uh, I don't know how to play this thing. Put me down in front of the uh, drum, you know. Okay, pat your foot here and hit this here and tap this here and uh, you know and that was the beginning of my uh, training with Mr. Johnny. I spent two years um, studying with him. The Mighty Quapa Apprenticeship Program pretty much uh, coincided uh, with the beginning of the canoe company in 1998 when I started um, building canoes and taking people on the river. Um, from the very beginning, when I was out back here taking logs and carving them into canoes and swinging these sharp tools and, and then putting those canoes on trailers, and then driving out and drive them out to the river or maybe paddling here on the Sunflower River. Any kid standing on the shore is going to be like, they go, what downstream? They go, what is, you know, there's that, that motion. And uh, by and by, kids started coming and just hanging out by wherever um, I was carving a canoe or paddling them on the water. And sooner or later, someone would ask, hey, you know, start asking questions. What are you doing? And then eventually one of them gets brave enough. You ask them. No, you ask them. Go, you ask them. Can I try that? And they're hooked, you know. So it, it, uh, the things we do just naturally attract kids. Johnny Bellington, Mr. Johnny. Actually, um, he uh, is as important as anything towards the uh, creation of the, of the Mighty Quap Apprenticeship Program. He showed me how it is that you can take um, something we're sharing, like the blues or like canoe building, and break it down into the simple skills that are involved along the way, and teach from the very basics, from tapping your foot and uh, you know keeping a beat with your hand on the snare. He was he he was really an inspiration for me, and how to do that with um, the young men and women who used to show up at my doorstep wanting to learn to carve a canoe because I just used Mr. Johnny method I'd, and taught them how, how to learn how to build a canoe in very simple steps. Yeah, that came directly from my experience with him when I was learning to play the blues. One thing is to bring kids to the river and to teach them things in nature, like survival skills, <laughs> if you might say, but also it teaches them there's something else out there after high school. The kids that are involved with it develop into paddlers on the river, and uh, then they go from paddler to guide. And uh, we brought it over from Clarksdale to Helena. They come here from 4 to um, 5.30, Monday to Friday, Thursday, uh, every day. And pretty much we just working with them hands on with uh, carving out canoes. And then that's on Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesday and Thursday we have to take them out on the river. We use a, um, a code of uh, ethics um, called the three R's, which is respect of yourself, respect of others, and respect of the river. 
once they get over their fear of the river and they're used to paddling, then we expect that in, you know, in the future, they're gonna pass that on to their own children and eventually they'll become more and more people that you know, love uh, getting out on that Mississippi River. It gives them opportunity to work with the apprenticeship program and become guides as they like and stay home in their hometown and guide on the Mississippi River. Or, like a lot of them, you know, eventually they'll find their path. Going on my eight years started when I was 12. Meeting John was a change in my life because, like I said, he taught me a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So, so yeah, that's the biggest change. He taught me things that I didn't know and I would have never known if I didn't know meet John. So. Just show them there's a different way of being. You, you can be yourself and to believe in yourself and work hard while you're doing it because if you continue to work hard, you're always going to land on your feet. John Rusky, our leader, has really put a lot of his personality into this. And part of his personality is he's a very optimistic, uh, good-hearted person. We are constantly complimenting them on what a good job they're doing, if they deserve it. But we don't say you're doing a bad job. We say you could do it better, and here's how. There's a lot of love involved with this. And, and uh, it, nobody gets involved with this that doesn't love children and love the outdoors and, and uh, feel good about helping people improve themselves. Yeah, John, uh, he's a good guy, giving guy, caring guy. And uh, actually, I see him as a little a father figure to me, so just like another father to me, like a, a good father figure, so. Uh, John Rusky is a very different guy. <laughs> um, he's a very um, good leader, good teacher. He always pos he always has a positive mind, even when things seem to go wrong. Like the other day, we was on the river, and we got kind of in a tight spot with the barges. He was like, hey, we can do it. Like, that's the kind of attitude John had. His view of the river is amazing. You know, he's a outstanding guy. Anything you need to ask him about the river, anything you need to know, he can answer. Like, he knows everything about the river, pretty much. He is a, a leader of leaders. And I, I don't know, I can't really explain it, but what I can say is we are the uh, only outfitting business on the lower Mississippi. So when I say these guys are the uh, strongest and most knowledgeable paddlers on the lower Mississippi, I can say that without a doubt because we're the only ones out there doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a new day, and every day I wake up and uh, and feel like it's the first day of, of the rest of my life. And every day I wake up and I want to see what's going on on that river. We're hoping that the Quapaws continue this on once we're gone. You know, I'm gonna be here for a while, but when we're gone, I'm hoping that the Quapaws continue our, our quest to continue to bring people to the river and to protect the river and to keep this going. Our uh, greatest hopes is, is that the mighty Quapaws will, um, will have the skills to overcome uh, any challenge that comes their way and uh, be interesting people and interested in uh, other people and um, live a peaceful and happy um, life wherever they go. Well, I just like to be remembered as someone uh, who cared and, uh, and uh, helped other people uh, see the beauty. You know, if we, uh, in the end, uh, turn the whole Mississippi Valley back into forest, well, uh, that would be the, the greatest thing I could ever hope for. The river for me is life. It's uh, the place that um, I feel peace, uh, the most happy and at ease and connected and in harmony with uh, myself and other people in the world. It's really like heaven on earth, or maybe it's like earth and heaven, I don't know.